Hello, lovely students. Missing you a lot. I hope I'm going to see you very soon. Um, still continuing on our revision path. Today we'll be, look, we'll be looking at output devices. We know what output devices are already, so we're not going to be defining output devices. But we'll be looking at um, some common output devices and their uses. We'll also compare the advantages and disadvantages of these output devices in comparison with each other. And also, we'll look at actuators and their uses. So the first output device that we'll be looking at is the cathedral tube. That's the um, monitors that consume lots of space that we used to use before. Uh, something like this. I don't know if you can see that very well. Okay. Um, they're cheaper than other monitors and they can be used with light paint, especially um, talking about card applications computer-aided designs. We also have the liquid crystal displays. These are the more modern computers, which we call the flat screen that we have now. And you know what the advantages are? They are smaller, they are lighter, so they do not consume lots of text spaces. Uh, disadvantage resolution may not be as good as the CRTs. The CRTs have wonderful resolution, very good resolution. In-place switching mode, IPS is generally used by creative professionals um, and the advantage is that it has wide viewing angles. That means, uh, you know, there are, I don't know if you have seen some computers that there are some angles that you are standing at, you cannot see the screen clearly or it's a bit blurry. For the IPS, it has very, so even if you are standing something like this, you can still see it very clearly. Okay, we also have the LEDs. Uh, you can read all about that. We have the touch screen that both serves. You will remember that um, on the IPU devices, we talked, to, we talked about the um, touch screen, yeah? Because it allows us to uh, select data, enter in data. Also, it can be an output device because we can see. So it serves as both the input and input device an output device. We also have a projector. The projector, this is a kind of a projector. Um, the projectors are machines that project um, image onto the board. So this is the projector here. This is the screen. So this screen is not a projector, but this device up okay, here is the, the device projecting onto this screen, and this is the projector. All right? Okay, you want to take note of printers and their uh, different, um, different advantages and, advantage, uh, and disadvantages. Um, so we have the inkjet printer, which is very good, wonderful, high quality printing. Uh, you have the laser printer, which has a sole advantage of being able to churn out lots of high quality printing. So it's faster. When you're talking about speed, uh, volume and speed, uh, lasers are preferable. And then you have the dot matrix printer, which is used in supermarkets. Um, a, a key characteristic is that they use a continuous paper. So when we say continuous paper, we mean rolls of paper. So once it's printed, you tear it off, something like that. And then you have the wide format printer that helps us print banners and logos and posters and the like. We also have a 3D printer. This is the technology of the age that we're living in. And with 3D printers, you can print just anything. I think it's going to be possible to print a whole human being very soon. I mean a complete human being. Yeah, 3D printers are getting to that, to that level. And we have your speakers. So you can only hear me because of the speakers that you are using. So that's also an output device. Actuators. They are part of a control process. So digital signals are sent by the computer to actuator to affect or control the real world. And some of the actuators that we have, 
So this is like the opposite of sensors. You know, sensors feeding data into the system and based on the data that the computer system receives, it sends to the actuators to do certain things. For example, it may send to a motor to start spinning. Examples, uh, or examples of area or applications, areas of applications, washing machines, control fans, we have a control robot and a manufacturing. So all those robots actually work by um, rotors. You have the buzzers, which makes that, those sound. You have the eater, and then you have the lights. God bless you. So this is, I would expect to see you again um, in the Google Classroom. Make sure you do all your class task and all the tasks you have been given properly and go through this material, especially the summary note that I've attacked. It will greatly help you to jog up your memory. But also, don't forget to go through your textbook. In fact, that is your primary resource. I expect you to go through it very well to make sure your knowledge is compact and that you're getting yourself ready and prepared for your IGCSE exams that is just around the corner. Have a wonderful and blessed day.